The name adaptation depicts the diversity and range of terroirs within the Napa Valley. This distinctive Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon is a complex yet approachable wine that hails from some of the most renowned and historic vineyards across the Napa Valley. From the mountainous terroir of Howe Mountain to the valley floor in Oak Knoll, the Stagsleaf District, and Carneros, these vineyard sites have allowed us to craft a wine that showcases the unique terroir and the broader expression of this special place. Adaptation Napa Valley is opaque purple in color with notes of wild blackberries, luxardo cherries, plums, cream de cassis, with hints of fresh spring flowers. Full bodied and beautifully ripe, but elegant with very fine, well integrated tannins and a gorgeous silky texture. Makes 2018 adaptation delicious already, but will age beautifully for a decade plus. Born as a result of decades long friendships with farms from a few of the best sites in the Napa Valley. These relationships have allowed us the accessibility to create a wine that reflects the very best of the Napa Valley. I'm Director of Sales for Cade, Plump Jack, and Odette. And what you just saw is, was a beautiful vineyard of the vineyards, a beautiful video of the vineyards that make up adaptation. I wish you guys could be here right now. It is beautiful in the Napa Valley. When I left my house this morning, you could smell fermentation even in downtown Napa, and we are more grateful for that smell than ever after last year. But we didn't get to make red wine. Um, this year, it's fermenting, and that's exciting. Um, I'm here with managing partner, John Conover. And um, John, for 10 years, you've been telling me there are two most important things in winemaking. What are they? Uh, the two most important things. First, um, I want to express my gratitude during the last 16 or 18 months um, with COVID, with everything that's been going on on the planet and our economy, um, for your support. Um, you know, there's a lot of great wines out there, and our partner, wholesale partners, have really has gotten us through these challenging times. Yes. But through on top of that, 2020 with the fires, of which we all know we made whites but did not make red, red wines because of the smoke taint in our grapes. Um, we're going to try to stretch out this 18 and 19, but today we're here to talk about adaptation and kind of the rebirth of a, a new winery, a wine that's really an adaptation. So I was lucky enough to move to Napa in 1984, and uh, the first thing I realized, besides the great winemaking here, were the people and the land. Um, because really our wines, our wines have always been about um, estate vineyards. Um, Napa Valley Cabernet and Chardonnay and, and Sauvignon Blanc and our 103, 203 acres of some of the best vineyards in Napa Valley. And that is good and has some limitations. And one of the limitations is that we've, up to this point, have had to only use fruit that we grow on our estates within our ABA. And uh, this, this human connection that we talk so much about, again, winemaking and what we do on the winemaking side, which is really important. But as, or even more importantly in some cases, are, is the human element and the land. Because you can't make great wines out of bad grapes. Um, it all starts with that basic ingredient. If you think about it, our wineries very much are vertically integrated from grape to winemaking to bottling to our, through our great wholesalers to retailers around the world. And having control of that land was, was critical. But also it's the people that farm the land, that prune, that harvest, um, that take as great care and pride in what they do as a winemaker does in the winery. And these relationships I've had for over 30 years here in Napa, um, I wasn't able to do business with my friends. Um, and adaptation gave us that chance. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know that Sanders talked about it before, but this is a wine with a map. I can show you where all these grapes are grown. I can introduce you to the growers, the families, the some cases multi-generational families that have farmed the same land for year after year after year. In some ways, we're lucky. They, they've chosen us as much as we've chosen them. That These are high-demand vineyards from Calistoga down to the Corneros, um, farmed by the great Andy Beckstoffer, the owner of, of Tokalon, again, a friend of mine for over 20 years, or Mark Neal up on, on Hell Mountain. And they've and somewhat chosen us to allow us to take the toils, their, their work, and make it realize it in a great bottle of wine. And so we feel honored that they've chosen us as mu much as we've chosen them. And this is the beginning of a long-term relationship. We know that you get one harvest a year, which we're right in the middle of right now, exciting time. But um, 
There's no doers. Once those grapes are picked, uh, they're picked. And we have Jeff Owens who will join us in a minute. He's actually making wine as we're speaking. <laughs> um, Hunter Point Parker, um, Odell winemaker, Jeff Owens, who makes the adaptation cabernets with all the great care he does the estate wines. Um, we'll talk about the winemaking side, but really the vineyard side is the starting block for anything. And having these growers in these vineyards is really a gift to us. Well, John, how'd you meet Andy? Andy, well, when you grew up in a small town, um, <laughs> like St. Lena, a 5,000-person town, um, at the restaurants, at the PTA meetings, that my kids went to St. Lena Elementary School, Middle School, and High School, you end up being part of the community, which is one of the joys for me of living here in Napa and being part of the wine industry. It's the wine business. It's the wine community. And living here allows you that. We all live here. We all live in Napa or St. Lena or Calistoga. I think it makes us better what we do. Mm -hmm. And I've been lucky enough to create these relationships over the years. Um, and they know that we are estate-driven, long-haul winemakers and grape growers here. And they want to find a good home for their grapes for the mm -hmm. long haul, too, with a winery that will respect what they do and mm -hmm. respect the grapes. And um, so, yeah, Andy's become one of my good friends and uh, one of the most famous growers here in Napa. Andy owes over 1,000 acres of vineyards here in the Napa Valley. And... Um, we get some great Merlot from him, some great Chardonnay for the Plump Jack Chardonnay. But, um, yeah, I've been lucky to have that relationship with Andy. Mm -hmm. And Mark Neal. Met Mark. him yesterday, but y'all have been friends for quite many, a long many, time. Many, many years. He's going on third generation uh, Napoli grape grower. And he has, my goodness, when you guys come out at some point, we'll come see us at Cade and we'll take a field trip over to Ink Grade overlooking Pope Valley, which is the Howe Mountain AVA. Part of it and part of it isn't. And, but he carved in the side of a thousand acre ranch. 250 acres of vineyards on a D9 tractor by himself as a <laughs> young man. Really a heroic um, accomplishment. And got one of the great vineyards of Napa, um, that, that ink grade property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what was your inspiration, John, to really put together a wine reflecting the broader Napa Valley? Our, our philosophy generally has been estate-driven fruit, vertically integrated. But what caused you to think about uh, Napa as a whole? In some ways, the Napa Valley bottling is the most difficult wine to make because we're taking varietals from up and down the valley from a number of different vineyards and putting together that assemblage, that master blend that, that Jeff does so well is a real skill set into itself. And you know, our wines are the Plump Jack Estate, the Odette Estate, the Cade Estate, and of course the reserve bottlings are fabulous wines. But in some cases, really need five to ten years to kind of rectify themselves to age, depending on the vintage. Some are really great up front, some need time. And um, while we were waiting, we needed some good red wine to drink. <laughs> so adaptation is blended, is made uh, for a style that this wine will age easily for five to 10 years, but it's made in the style, blended in a style that um, it can be your new Wednesday night wine uh, with your cheeseburger and a bottle of adaptation Cabernet. By the glass, it's Napa Valley Cabernet. It's really it's its finest. Um, that's drinking well now, but will age um, for a long time. But that blending, that ability to go for, for multiple vineyards up and down the valley, again, from the Carneros in the south, Merlot dominant, up to Calistoga in the north, which gives you some really decadent Cabernet, allows us to make those, those earlier maturing, very approachable Cabernet with mm -hmm. adaptation. That makes sense to me. And I think just your relationships, being able to do uh, business with some of your friends, taking advantage of... Uh, this beautiful site at Inkgrade, which is a lot of structure and power, balancing that with Merlot from Carneros, from, from Andy, uh, softening it up, allows a wine that can be um, a Wednesday night wine, but can also be a Saturday night wine uh, when you're having a party and maybe you don't want to open your Plump Jack at that moment, or maybe you don't want to open the Odette, but you want a wine that has been made with the same amount of care. He does. There's no difference in our approach to making wine for adaptation or of debt. We seem when we make our 100 point Parker wines is hopefully this will be a 100 point Parker wine too. But we use that same care in what we do. And from a wholesaler trade side of things, um, we, we're going to make this wine. This is a wine that you can get distribution on, um, that you can sell with confidence. That um, we're going to have vintage after vintage. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> and is the point I'm trying to make. And I know it takes a lot of time to get these placements, to yes. keep these placements, and we'll keep you supported with great wine. And, and again, Jeff is really amazing the way he, different skill sets for making a 300 case reserve blend rather than a blend, uh, we make a few more cases of adaptation than 300. But um, really a talented 
guy when it comes to blending and winemaking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys online, if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. So just raise your hand. We have people watching uh, for for your questions. But man, this is a, this is good. It's good morning wine. It's a good morning wine. Sometime the East Coast. Good afternoon wine. You can taste that kind of cherry berry softness that uh, the Merlot really softens those tannins and makes it so approachable and accessible. And I realize that wines in Napa Valley aren't inexpensive by any means, but I think the value at the price point that this wine provides is um, we do what we call brown bag tastings here, and we admire our competitors. We have to embrace them, but also we want to see how our wines uh, stack up. And this is a wine I would put in a brown bag tasting against maybe anybody from anywhere, and I think it will show the value and the quality will show through. Absolutely. It has the, you know, you can tell that it's made by one of the best winemakers in Napa Valley, if I can say that. Uh, it has attention to detail. It's got this purity of fruit, uh, clarity. There's nothing muddled. The tannins are in line with the with the uh, fruit and the acidity. I think it's like you said, going to age well, but probably won't age long at my house. <laughs> I, think, I think not. It's gotten off to <laughs> such a great start. Um, we've just started introducing the 18 to the market. Brand new label, brand new package, brand new bottle. I think everything look, is looking really beautiful. It's been so. Uh, well received and one thing getting back to vineyards which I'm supposed to be talking about vineyards and people (laughs) is I know on why we have a map and again I think that's such a valuable selling tool because we know that a lot of wines are blends uh, people buy wines on the bulk market and there's ways to put together these master blends Uh, but these are actually not concocted maybe that's not the right word but uh, a blend from wines that other people have made we've made these wines from grapes that we grow um, from our friends. And I think the inherent quality shows through. Again, you look at this map and you see some of the best vineyards in Napa Valley going this wine. And again, we can take you out there to where these grapes are grown and these wines are made. You know what, y'all? The bottom line is this. We're not going out looking for bulk juice, trying to hit a price point uh, for this brand new pretty label. We're going out trying to find great fruit to create something that represents Napa as a whole, that comes from a place that's grown by people, it's made by a person. And I think that really for us, these are wines that are authentic. These are wines that really represent the Napa Valley. Uh, that's important to us culturally. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, Andrew Fox wants to know, what is the next phase of adaptation as the brand post relaunch? The next phase, well, this is it, Andrew. How are you? Thanks for being with us. Um, this is this is the phase. I think that uh, the new this new label for adaptation uh, is beautiful. It fits in with the rest of its family of Odette, um, and I think really just talking about this as a wine from the Plump Jack collection. That's the phase, uh, and really we are depending on you guys to tell our story. Speaking of exceptional winemakers, poor Jeff Owens. Welcome. Happy to be here. These are all of our friends across the country. Hello there. Poor Jeff Owens. So normally harvest for red wine starts, you wouldn't be right smack dab in the middle of it, Usually, would you? Usually, yeah, starting, starting in a couple of weeks, actually. <laughs> so we're going to be picked out, like 99% done, come Monday. Which is Amazing. Crazy. I mean, I remember years where you're, where you're like looking at November. It's the 18, right here. November 8th and 9th. Actually, November 8th and 9th. For the last two wow. days. Wow. Wow. So I asked Jeff about, I don't know, four or five months ago, if he could be with us on October 1st. And it was like, oh, yeah, no big deal. We'll probably be waiting for Reds to come in. And then it got a little bit more stressful. We're, we're a little early. <laughs> early but exceptional. Early but exceptional. Yes. Well, John and I have been talking about uh, the two most important things in winemaking, people and places. Absolutely. Well, you are certainly uh, the biggest part of the people part for adaptation. So let's talk a little bit about this 18. You said the vintage was was late? The vintage was obviously a little bit later. Um, I've never been a part of a pick in November except for 2011. Um, 2018 was a little bit different in the fact that we were, it's just a, it's kind of a vintage of patience. Um, And it was really rewarding in the end, so we didn't have any threats from Mother Nature. Um, so we were able to pick um, exactly what we wanted to pick. It was just a little bit more drawn out. Interesting. Um, so 
yeah, patience, uh, it was bountiful, it was exceptional, the quality was fantastic. Um, I think this is the vintage where everything really came together as a whole. Including the packaging. <laughs> the final touch. <laughs> Including the packaging. I mean, I think for, for years the, the outside didn't match the inside, but I think we all finally, we finally got it right, Andrew. Um, the outside matches the inside, but... John and I were talking about, in a way, this, is, this wine's a little bit harder to make, maybe, than the wine right from the backyard here, Odette Estate, because you're driving up and down Napa Valley. So, you know, putting on a lot of miles, that's for sure. Um, well, we try not to take any shortcuts on this wine, so I try to, you know, the team and I try to make the wine the same exact way. Uh, we don't, you know, take any uh, shortcuts, we don't cut corners. Uh, just like we do a ton of micro picks here on the estate, we're trying to do the same thing at these different vineyard sites. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of trips up and down. Um, it's more work for everybody, but I think it results in a much better wine. Well, I took a sneak peek. The wine's beautiful. Um, one thing when I was thinking about your um, history with us at the Plum Jack collection of wineries is you started in the cellar at Plum Jack. So, yes. So that gave you some insight into fruit from Oakville. And then you were assistant winemaker at both Plum Jack and Cade up on Hell Mountain. So probably you're best qualified out of all of our winemakers to make adaptation. It's nice to be able to see a lot of, di a lot of different sites, for sure. Um, I mean, that's what that, this is right here, right? It's the, the culmination and the sum of many different sites coming together to rep represent the broader Napa Valley AVA. Yeah. Uh, mountain sites, valley floor sites, Cabernet, Merlot. What, what, one of the things when I tasted it early, just to make sure it was okay, <laughs> That, that, I, that struck me was this purity of fruit and the clarity and the balance. Do you agree with that? I guess you have to, right? <laughs> I'll take that all day. <laughs> now that is the goal. Yeah. Absolutely. So the, the wines from Inkgrade, um, which is a big backbone of this, uh, would, they, would you say they tend to be pretty structured? I mean, how do you balance out that tannin? So, yeah, I think that's kind of the, the starting piece. One of the key ingredients is that you want to have that supporting structure, that backbone. Um, I always say it's a little bit easier to have it than not have it. Mm -hmm. So we can always take it out. We can always blend with Merlot. We can always soften the wine if we need to, but it's really hard to add that back into the wine. Um, so starting with those you know, supporting pieces, um, ink grade, Oso, you know, we've got a lot of color. We've got a lot of tannin. We've got a lot of depth. And uh, then we've we're basically coming down the valley floor and balancing out the wine with um, some Cabernet. It's a little bit lush, plush, and then Merlot to kind of soften out the tannins as well. Now, the, the, the map I'm looking at says there's some uh, Odette Estate. There is. What? So, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a tiny bit. It's uh, all the young vines that are declassified mm -hmm. here. So we want to make sure that we're upholding the estate to the highest quality. And then it's also um, enabling us to get a feel for this young fruit to bring it in, to vinify it, um, to craft something amazing, and then also elevate the adaptation. So it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, makes sense. You know, I think a lot about, you have three estate wineries in Napa Valley. Amazing, number one. And why didn't we think of this earlier? The idea of having a place to put vineyards and vines that are maybe just slightly too young to make the estate, but exceptional fruit that we don't want to sell. So this is kind of the best of both worlds, helping our estates elevate, you know, Bordeaux's been doing it for a while. Yeah. They, yeah. They have a head start on this. <laughs> Helping our estates elevate. And, um, you know, also for you, Jeff, the, the courage to take on the entire Napa Valley. I think, uh, I think you've done a remarkable job here. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a privilege, actually, to be honest, to be able to work with multiple sites. And, and we always talk about great people, but, you know, these are our friends. They're our growers. We have long relationships with them. Uh, we're able to go out into the vineyard, have, you know, conversations. It's going to benefit everybody, essentially. So they're going to win, we're going to win, and then we get to, to craft this amazing wine. Yeah, key. It's that fun. key word, we get to. We get to. It's amazing. I was thinking, uh, I was reflecting upon last year, it felt a lot different. And, uh, and making wines in 2021 feels so gratifying, maybe more so than ever before. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty yeah. special this year. It is special. The wines are turning out spectacular. Yeah, how's the, how's the 2021 coming along? Really like them a lot, actually, yeah. It's um, also, I think we had to show a little bit of patience as well. So, um, you know, early signs for what we had out in the vineyard. Light crop, obviously, but the quality is super high. Um, it's just that we needed to wait for the tannins to kind of come around. And um, so we're, we're kind of seeing that. It's a tipping point right now. Mm -hmm. So the early extraction showed us that we need to kind of have some patience, maybe hang 
some things out a little bit longer. And, uh, and the wines from the, the past week, essentially, have been just amazing. So I'm super excited. Oh, oh, we have a question. Yeah. Uh, for Jeff, a team North Texas would like to know the vineyards change each year. For adaptation. There are always a few that might change here and there. And um, there's always an opportunity to find new vineyards or new growers or there's, you know, there's always exciting new things coming about. Um, so I think the, the staple and the backbone and the main sources are going to be going to be there, but we might plug in a few um, new and exciting vineyards that are smaller, um, like the young vines too could go in and out. Hopefully most of those are going to be growing into Odette. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's going to go away. We're pretty much there now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are going to be some slight changes, but I would say for the majority, for the bigger component of it, um, it'll be pretty consistent. But one of the ideas is, you know, John, if you're at lunch and run into uh, a friend that you've known and they have, you know, a couple of tons that they have, you know, that's where this map comes into place. And I think the most important thing, again, is you can, every vintage, this wine will come with a map. And every vintage, you'll know where the fruit's from. It's never going to be from some bulk uh, juice producer. Uh, it's never going to come from a tank. It's always going to come from a place. It's always going to come from a place and from grape to bottle. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's really the key. The question I had was, um, with not making the 20 vintage, um, what's going to happen? Uh, are you going to be out of the market uh, for a year? And to answer that question, the answer is no. Uh, we're going to take the 18, which was a bountiful vintage, fair to mm -hmm. say, yep. um, and the 19, which we had good uh, uh, quantity of as well and super high quality, um, and we're going to stretch that for three years. So, again, if you make a placement of adaptation on a wine list, uh, Sandra and her crack sales team, thank you guys out there, um, <laughs> have it allocated so that we can keep that restaurant placement. We know how difficult it is to get those placements on restaurant wine lists. Yep. And we want to protect those. So sell it with confidence, and we're going to have that inventory for you. Definitely. And this is really our first time to do anything like this. So number one, thank you for showing up today to be with us. Um, and... You know, I think the most important thing is that you know what we're doing because we don't get to do this without you. Uh, we ask that you go and tell our story and hopefully make some placements and um, all that comes from selling our wine. And we want to thank you. We made this. We've never done anything like this before. We made an adaptation adventure kit. And we want to thank the top 300 people around the country who do the best job on adaptation. You can speak to your own management on how that'll work out. But uh, we'll have an adaptation backpack, a Turkish beach towel, a couple of tumblers, a bottle of wine, and of course, something to open it with. Um, because we want you to go out and enjoy it, too. We want to just say it's a small, small way to say thank you for all your hard work on our behalf. You know, my crack sales team is three and maybe a third because we'll send Jeff out every once in a while and Aaron and Danielle and John. Um, but we don't get to do this without you. It's a really big deal that you're here and we appreciate that you talk about us um, from time to time. The 18 is delicious, oh, really, Jeff. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Good job. Good job. And John, anything you want to add? Um, just, it, it's a pleasure, and, and uh, again, there's a lot of great wines out there, but I think this is really going to blow your mind, that the 18 Adaptation Cabernet was just a beauty from the beginning, and I haven't had it a whole week now, and it just, it seems getting better and better. I think so, Agreed. too. Just, Agreed. oh, it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We got, we, we got this right. <laughs> we got this right. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers. Cheers. Any other questions before we say goodbye? Thanks for being with us, y'all. Thank you. From Napa Valley, hope you have a good weekend. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.